Hello, and welcome back to my Semlock CDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. With the development of the Orion 1 space plane and the expansion of Hoffman Station so that it can serve as a workplace for Kerbals in space, the EDB has realized the need for a large emergency Kerbal transport capable of returning engineers, scientists, and tourists who can't pilot the GBs back to Kerbin safely. To that end, we have here the second launch of the ELS system, ELS-2, and sitting on top of it is the Kerbal Emergency Return Pod, or KERP for short. The KERP is capable of carrying 16 Kerbals, but the test today has no Kerbals on board. DDB is going to use this test to see whether the KERP can transfer out to lunar orbit and return safely to the surface of Kerbin before using it as a transport for Kerbals. So here we go with the launch, T-3, 2, one and lift off. We have lift off of ELS 2 carrying the Kirk to low Kerbin orbit. Once again, the ELS is basically the core and two boosters of the shuttle system, the ETS, and the boosters are recoverable. They do have parachutes on board, and we have tested the recoverability of them. The center stack, however, with the Rhino engine at the bottom, is not recoverable at this time. It may be developed as recoverable later on. Here we see it completing the roll program and starting the pitch program. The missions for the Kerb are currently designated in terms of either facilitating Orion missions, station missions, or shuttle missions. For the Orion, mainly the idea is to evacuate some tourists who might get sick or need other kinds of medical treatment on Kerbin, but uh, allow the Orion to continue on its way with its main mission and so that is one possibility and there's no telling how many tourists it might need to carry in that case and so uh, capacity is 16 which is about half the complement of the Orion 1 would definitely suffice. Uh, here we see getting ready for booster separation here and we have a clean separation of the two boosters of course those are the most valuable portions of the ELS system now the Kerb could evacuate the entire Orion 1, but it would take two of them just to evacuate the passengers, and then there would still be the two crew, as we see fairing separation, and there is the curb. Uh, you can see a very robust vehicle, you can see the passengers are set low on the vehicle uh, to make it easier for them to ingress and egress. Uh, the pass uh, the, there are parachutes at the top, uh, it's currently mounted upside down, so the top is actually with the large docking port and there is a small docking port uh, well a standard clampatron docking port at the bottom so that it can uh, dock up with many different vehicles speaking of which there is the shuttle possible situation where this could be used as a quick launch option in the case of a shuttle mishap now the standard docking port might not be able to dock properly with the shuttle because of the aerospikes spikes in the way the the curb uses four aerospikes. spikes that might uh, be positioned in such a way as to make docking with the shuttle difficult as we see the ELS getting into uh, just suborbital so that the core stage of the ELS can deorbit and the Kerp will proceed on to orbit all on its own. So here the Kerp will flip around because it's currently backwards and control from the docking port. Let's see that. So you can see RCS systems, parachutes, and of course the four aerospikes which provide uh, the ne thrust necessary to make a soft landing on Kerbin even in the case where the parachutes fail for some reason and so that's a uh, critical backup uh, for the system and it was thought necessary to have that kind of thrust which is why the aerospikes were the natural option we had to have a surface ISP that was very efficient as well as good vacuum ISP. Here is the plot for the for the intercept of the moon and of course this is going to get into lunar orbit and then return so it's not going to be on a free return it has to get into orbit first and sort of uh, pretend to rendezvous with the station there being station but yes in the case of a shuttle mishap it could be used to evacuate the shuttle and the shuttle crew might have to EVA to it uh, the other possibility and the other intended use of the Kerp is of course to dock it up with Hoffman Station and use it as an evacuation vehicle for the station. And a Kerp might in the future be docked with all of the stations that the EDB plans to uh, crew and make sure functional for Orion purposes and for other purposes. 
Now you'll notice that the Kirk does not have a heat shield and that's why this test is necessary. We have to check whether its return from the moon is safe despite the fact that it does not have a heat shield and basically uh, it is going to be hitting the atmosphere with the aerospikes uh, landing struts and the bottoms of those passenger modules. Remember those passenger, passenger modules are right at the bottom of the vehicle and so gotta check whether that's safe or not and that's what we're going to do here. But here entering uh, Mooner SOI and burning for orbit around the moon. It'll simply burn for orbit and then exit. It should have more than enough fuel for this. Now for interplanetary missions it could potentially dock with additional fuel containers uh, to boost it to interplanetary locations to service other stations or to service the Orion when it's outside of Kerbin's neighborhood. And of course with the four aerospikes it has plenty of thrust to carry the extra fuel without going uh, too slowly without making very long transfers that might be inaccurate. That was among the reasons why the EDB chose not to use a nuclear engine on this, uh, no LVN. However, this could dock with the existing space tug and use a space tug to help it proceed to further locations. Here we see it beginning its re-entry and we are now watching for uh, excess temperatures that might be dangerous to Kerbals. And as we descend below 38 kilometers, we see here something is increasing in temperature to dangerous levels. Though not exploding, even though the temperature gauges have filled up, uh, we will take a closer inspection here to see what is going on. And there's something right there. It looks like, looks like an RCS thruster block. Is that correct? Yes, it's an RCS thruster block. Mission Control has initiated a barbecue roll program in order to perhaps spin it so that uh, but uh, there are gauges filling up all over the vehicle now so spinning it probably will not help. The idea was to spin it to the top and perhaps cool it down there but it looks like that the heat is actually even all the way around. It looks like all four RCS thruster blocks are vulnerable but uh, not going beyond the point of uh, no return, if you will. We'll have to monitor the situation. It's somewhat surprising that of all the things that could be overheating, the docking port at the bottom is flickering some indication of overheating, but not quite there yet. The RCS ports have quite a high heat tolerance, so it's surprising that they should be so vulnerable. Though, of course, they are sticking out uh, on the side of the vehicle there. so. But yes, uh, the parts that are most directly facing the airstream seem to not be overheating, though uh, that could be a flaw in the temperature gauging system. So far so good though, the vehicle has not broken up and things are actually cooling down at this point as the, as the curb comes below 27 kilometers. Descending quite slowly, uh, it was a gentle descent profile from the moon of course though, so a lot of velocity to burn off as it returns to the surface. The landing location was not targeted and of course uh, being not targeted it meant that there was some probability that the Kerp would land in the dark as it will and so unfortunately we have it in the dark here. Parachute deployment below the speed of sound and that was successful and with full parachute deployment the vehicle is brought down to approximately 8 meters per second at this point the EDB could have used thrust in order to slow it down further however Mission Control decided to test how well it could land without any thrust and despite the 8 meter per second velocity it landed successfully without any topple without any breakage and so that was an excellent sign and without using any thrust, of course, the vehicle was the same mass on touchdown as it was before re-entry, 22.6 tons. And so a successful test with some qualifications. Uh, the EDB will need to evaluate the risk posed by the overheating RCS ports, which seem to be the only particularly vulnerable parts 
They seem to be all right, but we will have to do risk assessment before committing Kerbals on this vehicle and using it as an emergency vehicle, of course, in which case it really needs to be robust and work every time. Thank you for watching this test of the curb aboard the ELS. If you enjoyed watching this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.